Hey guys, I just wanted to make a really quick video about using solvers. Uh, I've been doing a lot of solver work of my own recently because I uh, stopped subscribing to Run at Once and just decided I think it's just better to. You learn a lot because you could, excuse me, <clears throat> tinker with your own solves. And what I think the mistake I've been making a lot recently is. If you look over here, this is just the tree, the game tree that I built. But if you look over here, I just wanted to highlight this. This is the bet sizes I have when uh, check two in position uh, on the flop. 33%, 75%, and 150. Uh, these are the sizings I use in general. The problem with this is that 150% is really only going to be used in certain spots when I believe I have an extreme, extreme range advantage. These are boards that are going to be like ace, nine, king, that maybe rainbow, where uh, uh, button versus big blind, where the, the range advantage is extreme. The problem with that is that there's only a couple of boards in the entire aggregate of flops, and I'm sure that I'm... I'm a little bit incorrect about this, but the one that the overbet is going to be used by almost full range, and I'll show you that that uh, solve after this. But what I did was, so I ran this solve. This is button versus big blind, and I ran this solve with uh, these ranges. This is the uh, button range. This is the calling range from big blind. Uh, these are pretty solved, so there are weighted. Uh, some of these are weighted. If you see this, uh, these are not like six five is not um, at a hundred percent weight. Anyways, the point being, uh, after the out of position checks, which it will do with one hundred percent of its range, um, I got something like this. Purple is the uh, 75% and blue is the over bet. And to me, this was actually kind of hard to read. And it's very complicated. The mixing strategy is extremely vast. And this is gets it into a solver land where you get stuff like... Here, if we lock this... If we lock this um, right here, let's just do queen six, Okay. Queen six has a lot of mixing with its uh, over bets and its 75% uh, pot bet, and in real time this is very hard to imp implement. Um, basically, what I'm arguing for is that you need to simplify your solver down to just two bet sizings. There's many videos on this and ideas. Actually, Ben Salsky's the first one that really implemented this at Run at Once, where he basically gave a great um, analogy to chess where uh, you might play an opening that you know better and you so that you're that might give up a little bit EV in theory because the opening isn't the most sound at op, at equilibrium but since we're not computer versus computer it doesn't matter you will actually gain that e, that EV back almost immediately if the if your opponent cannot take advantage of it uh, like a computer can because a, a human <clears throat> a human can't do that the problem with solvers is is that this is just a device that outputs a game tree uh, solution it does not teach you how to play poker so I looked at this I look at this solve and it was actually extremely hard for me to understand uh you know it's mixing with nine six i'm looking at the six so six here's the board here sorry if you don't if you don't know how to read um gto plus it's basically the same thing as pile with like less uh it has less capabilities in terms of things to do like uh inputting i think there's a way to look up range advantage throughout the tree and inputting stuff ex directly from poker stars or other websites 
this doesn't have that but in terms of output of the solutions the solutions are basically identical if i ran this exact range with this exact stuff into pio uh or PO, whatever you want to call it, the solution would be the same. So the board is right here, six of diamonds, three of clubs, deuce of hearts. I wanted to run a solution here, where it was a low wheel, low semi-connected wheel board that was rainbow when it's button versus big blind, because I wanted to know, I actually wanted to know what was going to happen on the turn if you bet, let's just say, something like these A7s and these ace eights and stuff like this because if you look at ace eight off ace eight off is betting most of its combos that don't have the spade so the last uh suit would be the spade is betting these three combos at an 80 over 80 percent with uh the 75 percent pop bet size and i wanted to know what, what would happen on the turn if you bet there and they float you well, I didn't get to the turn because this this strategy was so damn complicated that I kind of got lost in it. So what I did was, and this is what I'm trying to get at through this whole video, is I ran the solver, I ran an, another, the same exact range, the same exact uh, configuration with uh, just get, leaving out the over bet size. Okay, and this will you'll see the difference. So if you could, if you could kind of in your head, picture this whole tree, <clears throat> I mean this whole range, and all these random colors, where green is check, look, this is the color scheme, check 33%, 75%, over bet 150%, okay, pot, size bet. Try to picture this in your head. Now, it's easy, it's, it's sort of easy, there's certain ones that are easy, like we're pure betting these, almost, and these, and we're pure checking these. That's kind of easy to see, right? The problem is all the stuff in the middle, and this is a lot of noise. So I think what we should do is we should give up some of the EV at a perfect equilibrium environment, and we should just get rid of the overbet size. Okay? Uh, no. Okay. <clears throat> so now, 99% check, which is basically 100 and now we get a, re a, a we get a range that is actually really easy to to read. So now you see, all I have is 33% one third pop bet and 75% pop bet and check. Obviously, you always have check. <laughs> it's poker. And now you see, instead of this extremely difficult strategy to to grasp, you eliminate the overbet, and now this is really easy to read. Now it almost looks like most of your range, which is actually 66%, is betting. So it's really easy to understand which which hands are not betting. Ace nine, ace nine suited, ace ten suited, ace jack. I mean, we could just say this is 100%. This is just solver land, super equilibrium bullshit that a human is not going to implement when you get a 10% of the time ace jack of clubs is is betting you don't as a human we, we can just round up 10 percent to 100 i mean 10 percent to zero so it would be 100 percent check so now you're seeing that these are all pure checking and now this strategy is actually not that hard to understand you just say well you look down at your hand if you don't have these ace highs that are that have no blockers because remember this is a wheel type of board now these ace high hands that have showdown value, these this queen jack bullshit that's that literally has no equity. These these this well it has it has some draw equity to queen jack over pairs, okay? <clears throat> and maybe uh backdoor flush draws if if we're discounting the the queen of the queen and jack of spades combination. And then you see what your sixes are doing, which is top pair. Your sixes are besides eight, six, and we could get into eight, six and nine, six, because I actually thought this was extremely interesting. Most of your sixes here, a six offsuit, 
hundred percent of aces out suit is betting for for the large bet of seventy five percent. All your sixes are betting for the large, and then all your hands with the the middle gut shot with an over pair. I'm sorry, the middle open ender with the with because it has the five, which brings in is gives it an open ender with the over with the over card. So your queen, king, ace, and jack, which is over card to the board, are pure betting. So now this is ex extremely easy to understand. You could simplify it like this. And we could talk about a6, 96. This has to do with blockers, but we'll talk about this in one second. Anything with showdown value, like the ace highs, that have no blockers to the straights, or no blockers to the pairs, or two pairs, etc. The sets, the sets are kind of different. We're, we're basically pure checking. All the pocket pairs that in the entire range, entire pocket pair range is pure betting. Aces is, is a somewhat frequency uh, check, but that's just because it has, uh, it does technically have a blocker to the low wheel with the ace, and it, it heavily blocks the low wheel ace because it, you have two aces and not just one. <clears throat> You'll see ace king, ace king suited, which is the nuts will <clears throat> will mix, but basically. The strategy here is we anything with showdown value that we're that's winning so this is for what i would call thick value the pocket pairs are pure betting any ace highs with back doors especially just ace highs in general with no pairs and king highs are checking and anything with blockers with, with a pair or somehow hit the board are betting so in general, we're actually betting most of our range, like I said, 66%, which kind of rounds up to most of it because the 66% in, includes bluffs, lots of bluffs. And it's very hard to combat this strategy because let's just say <clears throat> the turn is um, what would be like, uh, like a, a car, a har, a, we could like pair the deuce. Okay, so let's say the deuce of spades. Okay. <clears throat> ah, sorry. I meant to do check. Bet. Call with the deuce of spades. Turn report. Oop. Deuce of spades. Now, the majority checks. Now, this is a little bit easier to understand because, okay, so my turn strategy has a lot of bet sizing, but in general, we're still checking this range when the deuce of spades, I mean, obviously this is quads, when the deuce of spades hits the turn. Now we're majority checking, okay? This is kind of easy to understand. <clears throat> All the hands that are, we get there with the bet are majority checking. This is actually really easy to understand. So going back to the first solve when I had the over bet, and I gotta change my. This is my turn bet. This is my turn strategy. But we're gonna go back to the difference between this range and look how easy this is. So save this in your head. Everything with showdown value and somewhat backdoor uh, flush or high card for the pair over pair value is checking, and anything with blockers and at least a pair. Is betting. <clears throat> Nine six eight six queen three is a little bit of a different queen three. I don't really understand <clears throat> why this checks at almost fifty percent. It probably has to do with uh, balance in general. King deuce is just kind of a bullshit solver land hand. So this is now simplified. If we go back to the other one, how easy this is to understand. Big blind versus button. 6-3 deuce. <clears throat> I mean, look at it. It's so much more difficult because because we have to mix these two bet sizings. Because you could kind of say to yourself, well, pocket nines is is mixing between, it's mainly mixing between, it is pure mixing between over bet and 75%. But in, in a GTO, in a live setting, are you really going to know what to do when you over bet and then the turn comes, the, the deuce of spades, and then 
you're going to know the difference between the over bet and the 75% bet, what to do when the turn when check to again. I mean, now we're going down these game trees that are so complicated and so different that you're probably going to give up EV more based on your mistakes rather than giving up AV, EV because you're not playing at equilibrium. Because A, no one plays at equilibrium, and B, you're just going to have a less understanding of what to do in this spot because you're overcomplicating it yourself. Like I said, this is not a new idea about simplifying your strategy, but this is just something to understand. There's two ways to approach this. A, don't make the mis don't make mistakes like I did, where you're over, you're overcomplicating your flop strategy by o by putting an over bet in there. So what I'm gonna might do in the future is only put in the over bet where I think the in position. I mean. Yeah, in position has an extreme range advantage, which is not on the 6 3 deuce board. It has a range advantage for sure. <clears throat> but when it has extreme range advantage and extreme nut advantage, it has neither. I mean, it has it has range advantage, but it does not have extreme nut advantage, which is why all this mixing is there. I'm going to see if I could run the solve on an Ace King 9 mono board, and we can get that too. But right now, Basically, what I'm arguing is for simplification. Give up some EV to understand your own strategy better. All right. Okay, so here's the solve for the Ace King Nine Rainbow, and as you'll see, <clears throat> range is is mainly if it's a bet, it's mainly the over bet size, and it's not using this. Uh, 75% bet. It's using it at, with pocket aces probably because <clears throat> since you block the nuts so hard and you block any hand with like th with an ace like ace nine ace king, uh, it this just probably wants to lay better pot odds, which is kind of like a solver thing. It goes that's the same thing that goes with kings. But as you'll see here, it's either checking or betting the over bet. It's not mixing the 75% or 30% pot size bet that much. See, even over here, the dark blue is all over bets. And this 75% is just uh, these weird spots with, that has to probably do with the suits. And I, like I said, I didn't get, go too far into it, but most of the time it's betting. It's using this over bet in this ace-king-9 because in this situation, with this, with, with this configuration, which is this which is identical to the ones that we used before. Uh, range advantage and nut advantage is so large that it's mainly overbetting when it bets. Um, it is not overbetting range, as you can see here, the distribution, it's about 50-50. If we could get rid of this, we're gonna put that into, we're gonna put, if we can merge this bet into the overbet, uh, it's gonna be about 50-50 between overbetting and checking so that's just the small caveat that I wanted to make clear from what I said previously about uh, a board that <clears throat> this is probably the one board in Hold'em that favors the uh, in position more than any board that I could think of off the top of my head and I uh, just wanted to show that the over bet is the main size because that the reason is the reason I bring this up <clears throat> again, and this is again a, not a new idea. I just was kind of excited about it because instead of using this overbet on the flop often strategy, you should look at flops that favor you so much, and instead of mixing it overbet with your flop strategy, you should just over bet the f just go through flops that you think are an extreme range and nut advantage spot for the in position so memorizing the flops is better than memorizing than than understanding your mix strategy so there's a way in p in pile and I'm still learning GTO plus to aggregate flops and I think actually that's in flopzilla I'm sorry which I used to have um, and we can go over flops and you just basically type in what flops and it will give you 
hundreds of combinations of flops, uh, and you'll and then you could sort by like nut and range advantage, and that's when you want to. That's what the tools you kind of want to use to understand where you should be overbetting instead of memorizing the mix strategy. You need to get into which flops. So basically, the thesis of this whole video is simplify your flop strategy and really only simplify your flop strategy so you could understand the spot better instead of and, and give up a tiny 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 little bit of ev because you are for understanding your strategy and this over bet which is kind of like an esoteric spot anyways it's kind of like knowing donk leads for large out of position what, what spots to do that with you don't really need to know that you just need to simplify your strategy and then we could once you understand your own strategy better then we could figure out which flops we are over betting majority on it's pretty obvious that we're doing it with ace king nine but then you have to study the spots and then you could extrapolate like the turns in the rivers and what the thresholds are for defense ranges and check raise ranges uh, from from the out of position and then you could extrapolate that strategy into the future on boards and runouts that f that are supposedly majority over bets and that's a whole different video all right guys thanks for watching I know this is sort of uh, was sort of like me just rambling about ranges and stuff but um I just had to like I felt like I had to just get this off my chest because I've been doing this kind of solver work and uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. So thanks guys.